Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. We have to move from here. We have to keep looking to, to not live here anymore. It's just not a safe environment. Some people are looking to move after another crime happened on Bellsley Boulevard in Moorhead early this morning. This is the latest incident in what some consider a troubled neighborhood. Two teenage boys were allegedly attacked with a shovel and a brick, sending one of them to the hospital with what police are calling significant facial injuries. Police arrested 43-year-old Jerome Walker on two counts of felony second-degree assault and say the victims knew Walker. Valley News team's Ashley Bishop spoke with neighbors who are tired of seeing crime outside their windows. Neighbors say they woke up to lots of screaming and yelling just about 1.30 in the morning. And it was happening here in this townhome cluster. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't, I didn't want to get up to see up through the window because I was so scared. That, like, then, then they were all yelling, let's go, let's go, run. And then they're all, they all ran and then there's police coming. 16 year old Mara says it happened outside her bedroom window in the townhomes next to hers. They were yelling like fighting. They wanted to fight. Her sister in the room next door heard all the commotion as well. One calling for help, help, and why did you hit him? Other neighbors who did not want to appear on camera say they believe the people were drinking when the incident happened. Other people that know everyone involved say it's not a big deal. But to the Shia family and others nearby, they disagree. It, this neighborhood just scares us. The Shia family says they've had enough and are looking to move. I'd like the police would know that this place isn't safe and I'd like them to keep it under their radar in, in case something like that happens again and it's, it's going to happen. Police say this was not a random assault, but they will continue to investigate. In Moorhead, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. The suspect, 43-year-old Jerome Walker, is being held in the Clay County Jail. A scary situation for some people out in Lakes Country after reports came in about a bomb threat at the Detroit Lakes Walmart that placed the store on lockdown. The store received a call just after 1 this afternoon, leading them to believe there was a bomb somewhere inside. Police evacuated the building, and they and firefighters searched the store but found nothing. Just before 3, Walmart reopened and resumed business as usual. In a news release, Detroit Lakes police say they're analyzing phone records and talking to Walmart staff in order to find the person who made that bomb threat. One person was taken to the hospital after being exposed to high levels of carbon monoxide at a Fargo hotel this morning. Around 10.45, emergency crews responded to the La Quinta Inn and Suites at 2355 46th Street South. The Fargo Fire Department says when crews arrived, the carbon monoxide detector had activated in the pool area. Officials evacuated that area and checked out people who were there to see if they were experiencing any symptoms from overexposure to carbon monoxide. They believe there was a leak in the heating system in the pool area, so the gas was turned off to prevent any more carbon monoxide from getting in. They are still investigating the cause, though. There's no word on the condition of the person taken to the hospital. Showers are making this Memorial Day a bit soggy for some of us. Robert, have we seen the last of them? I don't think we've seen the last of them. We'll still see that chance for an isolated sprinkle or shower as we head through this evening tonight and even for the first part of your Tuesday, but most of us will see less and less shower activities we head through the next 24 hours. Temperature wise, it's cool out there. We've dipped down to 48 degrees now in Thiefer Falls, 55 here in Fargo, 59 in the Wapathan Breckenridge area, also 59 in Sisseton and in Gwinter. Winds still on the breezy side, still seeing gusts well over 20 miles per hour. We'll see them subside just a bit tonight. Tomorrow they pick up again out of the northwest 10 to 20 with some gusts as high as 30 miles per hour. A lot of cloud cover out there and underneath those clouds, we continue to see a few showers. Had one just make its way through the Fargo-Moorhead area. Lesser chances for that rain here in the Fargo-Moorhead area as we head through the rest of the evening. But we will see that slight chance for a shower or two. And temperatures slowly dropping on off. Actually, we've dipped down to 55. I think we jumped back up just a little bit now that, that rain has cleared the area and then slowly fall back to the mid-50s by 9. Tomorrow, another cool day with a chance for some showers. But then after that, we're going to dry it out and warm it on up. We'll have the details on that in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. A Fargo man is facing drunk driving charges after rolling an ATV near Lisbon. It happened last night on 73rd Street Southeast. Police say 24-year-old Taylor Wixo was going westbound when the ATV began veering off the road. Wixo attempted to steer back onto the roadway and overcorrected, causing the vehicle to roll. 
According to the North Dakota Highway Patrol, Wixo was injured and taken to a medical facility. Investigators are working to figure out the cause of a fire that severely damaged a home in Wapaton, North Dakota. Firefighters were called to 217 11th Street North around 1030 last night. The home is in a residential neighborhood, not far from the downtown area. No one was injured. The trial for a man accused of two murders in Fargo enters its second week tomorrow. Ashley Hunter is charged with killing Clarence Flowers and Sam Trout nearly two years ago. He's also facing an arson charge. In a jailhouse interview with Valley News Live, Hunter says he didn't do it. But a nurse who was treating Hunter after his arrest claims says that he claimed responsibility for the deaths. According to court documents, Hunter said the voices in his head told him to kill three people. The court set aside nine days for the trial. Tomorrow will be an important and perhaps pivotal day in Minnesota's legislative process. Tuesday is the day Governor Mark Dayton says he's going to decide what to do about the five budget bills sitting on his desk. Dayton has said he is genuinely undecided whether or not he'll sign them. He says he's not very happy about some of the compromised legislation sent his way. Tomorrow is also the day state Republican leaders will be coming to Moorhead to offer their take on those bills and the session. The city is in line for some $42 million in the bonding bill, awaiting the governor's signature. That money is for a long talked about underpass south of the high school. The sights and sounds of Memorial Day 2017. This is the day set aside to honor the memories of the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom serving our armed forces. The scene this morning on the Veterans Memorial Bridge over the Red River. The dreary weather underscoring the somber nature of this annual observance. It is one of thousands of commemorations across the nation today. The Grand Forks Air Force Base says it will take a little extra time to stop and remember those who didn't make it home as we honor those who died in military service. A table on the base and others across the country are always set up to honor men and women who were killed in action. Today is one of the busiest travel days of the year. According to a survey from travel planning website TripAdvisor, 41% of people will be returning from their Memorial Day destination today. Of those traveling the roads, 64% drove to their destination, while 27% flew. Travel in general was up by 6% this holiday weekend, based on a survey. While 14% of travelers plan to return tomorrow, more than one quarter decided to extend their Memorial Day vacation this year and plan to come home on Wednesday or later. Those who pay attention to the price of gas have probably noticed. Prices are up a bit this year compared to last year's Memorial Day. The national average for a gallon of unleaded regular is $2.37. A year ago, it was $2.32. The statewide average in North Dakota is about 238. In Minnesota, it's 232. In both cases, that's about five cents more than a year ago. In Fargo Moorhead, the average price is about 215, again, about a nickel more than last Memorial Day. Lindenwood Park is making it easier for you to get on the move as we roll into summer. Details to come on Valley News Live at 6. Cloudy, cool, breezy out there with a few showers still roaming through the Red River Valley. We'll continue to see that risk for a few showers tonight and early tomorrow, but then some much better weather is on the horizon. All the details on that coming up right after this.